Is the mic on? Episode 51, What's Wrong with Orny Adams? <laughs> My guest is already laughing. I haven't even started. Listen, I, I make a living complaining. If I complain to you, I'm not looking for solutions. Solutions... That, that ruins my entire brand. I, I want to start with not a complaint today. I want to start with uh, miracle Grow. This is not an ad, but uh, fantastic instructions. On the back, it says, for a gallon of water, mix one tablespoon. And then in parentheses, it says the big scoop. Thank you. Thank you for spelling it out. Indoor plants, uh, one of the small, the, the teaspoon. I have no clue what the difference is between a teaspoon. I'm going to take it out of the box. A teaspoon in a table. It has bothered me in t my entire life. You just, if you don't cook, and by the way, in every country, they're different. A tablespoon and a teaspoon. In one country, it's 15 milliliters. In another, it's 12. It's 14. There's no, we can't even agree. How are we ever going to agree in this world if we can't agree on what a tablespoon really is in a teaspoon? But they spell it out for you. What? This is a tablespoon, the big one. I hate these units of measurements. I don't know what a teaspoon, a, a tea and a table have to do with each other. Further confusion is the abbreviations. One is T T L. What is it? T B S P, and the other one is T B uh, something else. T S P. T B S P. T S P. It's a pain in the ass. Episode fifty-one starting right now. You know who this is, right? That's Kirk. Uh, it's your husband. And me somewhere in there. I've got a guest in studio today for episode 51. It's going to be fantastic. And at the end, stick around. Stick around because, Orny, I will be talking about a guy in my show in Sarasota that was taking notes. I'm bringing this down a little bit. goes into a beautiful, beautiful instrumental. Thank you to everybody that subscribes on Patreon. For the people that watch the older episodes on YouTube, we're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TikTok, Instagram. What else is there? Twitter, Facebook. There's everything. MySpace. MySpace. That's where I should have stopped then. <laughs> I should have ended my career then. We're in this way now. My guest today is a director. A director of an Academy Award winning film. Uh, she has directed, amongst others, Carol Burnett, Michael Keaton, Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, Robert De Niro, Renee Zellweger, Angelina Jolie, Ziggy Marley, my hero, one of my heroes, Eddie Murphy, and Martin Scorsese. Vicki Jensen, welcome. How do you direct a director like Martin Scorsese? Yeah, that was terrifying. I mean, not that he was in person, but uh, the preparation. You know, like, hey, you're going to look at my directing style. What am I going to do? Turned out he was fretting the same way when he came in the next morning for us to start our recording. He's like, what do you want me to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do you want, you want me to like just read? Do, should I do? I'm like, yeah, you, you do that. Do, do you that. think directing a director is easier because he's more empathetic? He understands the process or could it be worse? Uh, I think he was just nervous, uh, you really? know, because he wasn't. He, had, he acts sometimes, but not all the time. He shows up in, you know, in series work and features and stuff like that, but it's not his primary career. So I think it makes him really nervous. Right. But um, I, when working with like Michael Keaton, he was directing a movie at the same time that he was in a movie that I was directing. And so we talked a lot mm -hmm. and it was his first time directing too. So when I would explain some kind of shot, I was trying to do like a one or, you know, the camera's just going to slowly move in as the family was, you know, moving around and uh -huh. doing like this little kitchen dance. He's like, Oh, Oh, I know what you're doing. Oh, that's going to, Oh, that's going to work. Great. Okay. Yeah. Let me start over here. Cause I can see the camera could see me better over there. Right. right? You know, right, so right, yeah, right. it did help. So we're talking about the animated film shark tale. Uh, you also directed Shrek, which won the Academy Award. That was the first Academy Award ever awarded to a animated film. It was. It wasn't the first. Uh, uh, an animated film had been nominated for a Best Picture in the past. Mm. That was Beauty and the Beast. But um, we finally got a category of our own, and you know we bring in a, a tremendous amount into the yeah. Academy. Was a lot of box office goes to animation, so it was about time that we we got our own category, and and so Shrek was the first one. And this is back when I. I, I the Academy Awards, were it was grander. It really meant something. It doesn't feel like it's as big as it once was. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of scrambling, a little bit of stumbling towards a, a, a better inclusion, better understanding of, of other movies, uh, other points of view. You know, I think that, that Me Too and... Um, for a long time, there's been a big push to bring, uh, you know, bring the ranks of women up in in filmmaking, yeah, because they've been excluded. We've been excluded along with people of color, and 
So, so there's been a lot of effort to move in that direction and some of it's misstepped and some of it's smart mm -hmm. um, that everyone's trying to figure out a way. Yeah, I mean more in the sense of like, what is a movie? Like yeah. when I was a kid, a movie was you went to the Woburn Cinema and they had eight screens and you watched a movie. Yeah. Now it could be straight to iPhone. It could be streaming. It could be, there's just sort of, so there's like, there are films that are nominated that nobody sees because it's only on Hulu. Whereas before there were, the yeah. plank was more defined. So I, f and I also feel like celebrities changed too. Like when I was growing up, film actors would not do TV. Mm -hmm. That was taboo. That was taking a step down. Now TV is huge. TV, there are things that are f directed or filmed on TV that are like movies. It, yeah, it, it's it, amazing. We were, we started watching uh, Moon Knight last night. And that's as well produced as a, as any feature with Oscar Isaacs in it. it was, I, what it was, is this? What is I, I don't, yeah, it's apparently part of the, one of the universes. Don't ask me DC <laughs> yeah. or Marvel. I know I'm a total idiot. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I can't follow half of these movies anymore because they all reference other movies too. Oh, they do? I guess that's kind of fun. It was like in the old days there were serials, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what started the whole Star Wars, right. um, you know, uh, trajectory. But, but yeah, now I, if I sit down to watch one of these Avenger movies, it has so many characters that just sort of pop in for a second, pop out and like, I didn't see that movie, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I miss the days of just like a standalone movie. Right. That you just go get your popcorn, settle in, and you're going to be told a story, and you don't worry about whether there's going to be a sequel or not. What What are your top three favorite standalone movies? Oh, my God. Well, it's Princess Bride. Mm. I just adore it. And if I come across it on TV, I have to finish watching it. Right. Another a goofy one is The Court Jester. Mm -hmm. have, oh no, my god you no. have to see it. danny Kay. okay um and it, look it's a white white world we get uh -huh. it it was the 50s late 50s and movies were going way more um verite you know mm -hmm. a little more realistic scorsese sure. might have been coming up but uh it was a throwbacky musical yeah. with danny Kay doing stupid voices and stupid bits right, and right, it's right. fantastic and what's your third what's your third <laughs> what is a, a christmas movie is there a christmas one They're oh a christmas like... story is great mm -hmm. uh Gosh, for serious movies, you know, uh, ordinary people, and as good as it gets, I love that one with yeah. Jack Nicholson. Oh wow! I, love I that. work from home. It's fantastic. I don't come knocking. I don't care if I'm decaying. I don't care. You know that scene where yeah, he, totally. You, you know, he keeps knocking. I use stuff. that movie all the time. You know, we get notes in our when we're right. making animated movies, and we we show our our movies to the studio first, to all the other yeah. crews that yeah. are working there, and get feedback because that's our first audience, and we get to pre-edit our our mm -hmm. movies in in animation, and people are oh, he's so unlikable and right. like so I use the example of it's uh, as good as gets have some faith in your audience that they can stand not liking the main character for right. a little while but they are compelled to find out why oh huh. interesting yeah I mean that film is one of my favorites and you know that scene there's there's you know like I love because I've gone back and watched it and it's you know very homophobic yeah. and as you watch some of these older you know, movies and clips and things that inspired you, you, you sort of retroactively like cringe, sure. which is, which is really strange, which brings me to a thought that I had this morning because Eddie Murphy, one of the most likable comedians, I grew up, I was in high school, it was my formidable years and it really shaped my comedy, Eddie Murphy, Sam Kennison, uh, George Carlin. But I wonder, cause you directed Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking. I wonder if my views on marriage were shaped by these comedians because comedians always yeah. bash marriage and I bash marriage too, which is strange because I come from a family where my parents are still happily married. We all talk on the phone every day. Like I have a really close family. It's that war between the sexes was always like a very easy place to go, right? right. For, for comedy, yeah. you know, women, mm, you know, because yeah, yeah. most of the comedians were men. And so right. half the audience was, you know, taking it in. And I think the other half was like, okay you know which we weren't aware of like of as a comedian not. i did it too because you saw it working and you said okay this works going after relationships in in traditional gender roles uh, but I, here's my view which is a, a little bit different and so now i've made it more gender neutral i talk about how marriage isn't even safe you know that <laughs> that, that married people die every single day and, <laughs> right. that, and that marriage overall is just work uh so i've sort of changed it like and now marriage is a ponzi scheme but even that feels a little easy yeah yeah but, but we're humans i know 
and it's fun to poke poke fun of just the our foibles and our our faults and stuff it that's where our humor comes from it always comes from somebody else's pain that's an old old joke or your own pain in patterns mm -hmm. there are patterns and yeah. i just see a consistent pattern so i i point it out now back to your directing because <laughs> but enough about me no 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 no, 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 no. About me? <laughs> i want to know help me understand what does a animated uh, animation director do what's different about directing animation versus uh, traditional what we consider film with live actors right there yeah i haven't do, done both you know it's it's in a way a lot the same it's yeah. not that different but you do it in iterations in animation so both of you both an animation director and a live action director work with the script initially work with the story start shaping it weeding out the extras putting mm -hmm. in stuff that we relate to all of that yeah um you you are you're working with the actors but you're working with the actors not on a set not on a stage so yeah. you you know uh you work i work with the actors very much like i would run a rehearsal so we record everything and work to understand the whole scene and and it, like you would be uh, rehearsing a play but i know? imagine and, like when you direct a martin scorsese he comes in you're in a sound booth what looks we all know a sound booth there's yeah. a guy behind a big board like this yeah. with hundreds of buttons and then he's in a uh, in a glass booth is that the way it is or do, are you on a stage um i've kind of well uh, yes we, we, we do booths but you know i actually got to direct martin scorsese and robert de niro together mm. so i went oh. in the space with them i i, and I bet you're the only person in the world that's ever done that i maybe maybe so because yeah. they had done nine movies together but the first time they appeared together wow. so it, it's on film somewhere i don't know some archive at dreamworks or on the, the end of a dvd or something i'm not sure but, yeah. but yeah it was super fun so i went into the studio with them and just ran it for their comfort like it was just rehearsal hmm. you know like let's read the whole thing out loud and uh and you know just take it apart in pieces and not what some some animation directors are like take that line just read it three different ways like you know i i want performances that are more authentic and hmm. and coming from them so having them understand what the scene is about and then trying different ways of manipulating each other or or having an effect on one another it just made it so much more fun and hmm. being in the room like you know what they're used to it just it just made it the best yeah was it your idea to have mike myers have a scottish accent um you know there's a lot of stories that that go around about that but but yeah my my co-director uh, andrew adamson and i um uh we were uh recording with him the first day right and um we had, you know you, you do so many scenes um that never make it to the final movie so oh. in a funny way i feel like we made all the movies already <laughs> you yeah. know we try something and cut it for instance this scene that he was reading was a letter from his dad so he had he had left home and was writing home to his parents and then they wrote back and mm -hmm. Um, and he did his the father with a Scottish accent because his own father right. is Scottish. So uh, Andrew and I look at each other. Like, oh my God, that's him! That's him! And we, you know, hit the button and like, like, oh, oh, Mike, Mike, oh, could you could you do Shrek like that? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, because he he was um, in the middle of Austin Powers and right. he knew he had a Scottish character in there. Oh. So, but he did it. He yeah. did it. So we recorded the whole movie that way. We had um, maybe animated up to. I don't know like 10 minutes of it right. the rest was in rough story sketches See, and the story that i read was that he had done half the film and that it cost 10 million dollars to redo it or that's what katzenberg said and then and, and then he had to come out and say i didn't cost the studio you know millions of dollars you know what is... i didn't hear that yeah, part of the story yeah, yeah. that's that's amazing yeah i look i i was there i have my own memory of it right you know i don't I would not know about any ten million dollars that's over my pay grade, but <laughs> but I do know we we had animated about ten minutes. We had the rest in storyboard, scratch vocals. One of our storyboard artists did explain very... what scratch vocals is. Well, um, before we record with the actual actors, um, we want to get the scene up on its feet with the story sketches, and we edit it together and make it feel like a movie. The whole movie we do this way. We put uh, temporary music in, whatever scores we find from other movies that kind of suit the scene. Um, we'll put sound effects in and oh, I'm losing my headphones. Yep. There we go. And then, and then, and scratch vo voices. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would do a lot of scratch voices yeah. for, for movies and for each other yeah. uh, on, um, what was it on, on, uh, uh, the road to El Dorado. Uh, I tried to do Chell for them. So right. there were, but it turned out it was only one sentence. I could do like Rosie Perez, right? where she, she goes, this is the most comfortable chair I have ever sat in. That's really good. But that's the only line it can do. Oh, that's it. <laughs> 
If I try to do any other sentence. Has she heard you do that? No, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. If I try any other sentence, it just doesn't yeah. work. But but I've done scratch vocals on all of the movies. I was like Fiona's, or um, Shrek's dad and, and what was or that mom. Voice? Shrek's mom. Oh, Shrek's, Shrek's mom. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Andrew did Shrek's dad. And, you know, we just do it until we get the scenes where we want yeah, them. Yeah. In fact, and so I probably should have said this up front, not. 15 minutes in we're actually friends we're neighbors yes we met during covid when we were having like an outdoor get together and oh by the way i, I brought your rake back oh thank you yeah yeah there's a lot of trading of tools you know harlan who's um, you directed in the film harlan williams i did his podcast yesterday i i just i borrowed one of his axe picks because i had to take a tree out and uh i was just talking like i am loud and your husband turned around and is like, I know that voice. Yeah. Your husband's a big va- fan of comedy. Totally. Yeah. He listens to comedy on on uh, po- podcasts, on, on, you know, Pandora, everything. He's the one who suggested. He's like, you yeah. know, have Vicky on. Just don't misspell her name. Make sure it's, <laughs> it's not I-E. It's with a Y. You or, have... And it's not S-E-N either. Yeah. You hate the Vicky with a Y, huh? No, I am a with a Y. Yeah, I mean with the I-E, rather. Yeah. You hate when people get it wrong. Well, you, you, you don't like it when your name get, is at this point i don't i've yeah. given up Cor- <laughs> just uh, corny adams <laughs> well there's sometimes it's o-r-n-e-y uh, like on yeah. wikipedia they had it misspelled then i changed it then they changed it back then i changed it and then i got banned from wikipedia for making changes to my own page yeah like, and i'm like but i've got i've got the right information oh wait we didn't finish that story yeah go ahead. yeah right oh so oh oh yeah about how the voice right that that who who made the decision and why yes yes yeah. Yeah, so so we showed the movie to Steven Spielberg, who was obviously a partner. These are at, big at names. Dream you worked with. Yeah, oh, it was good for super you. cool. So yeah. I went and bought like this special suit that I wanted yeah. to look good, and and uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. But anyway, yeah. so we're we're showing the movie to him in the theater at DreamWorks, and you know, ten ten minutes or so of it is animated. The rest is, is in rough layout or super rough uh, storyboard drawings, sc- scratch. He's seen yeah. animated. Um, reels before Mm -hmm. so so uh this is the funniest sweetest movie really i've seen Mm -hmm. in this theater but uh, why why is mike doing an accent Uh and we're like well uh because and he's like i think you know maybe off-putting people might not be able to relate to it like all right he goes i don't think you need the accent so we go back to mike and say you know, well, okay, well, let's try it just with your own voice, which he was really actually reticent to yeah. do because um, from his experience, he, you know, he's super analytical when it comes to, to, to comedy too, oh. just as, as you are. And he, um, you know, he'd done um, When I Married an Axe Murder, right? right? And so there was the Mike that was just Mike, and then he had all those characters and he mm. just always felt like he was stronger when he was in a character. You know, mm. it was something to sink his teeth into. So when you're doing his own voice and it, it maybe it felt, I don't know, maybe it was just too vulnerable. I'm not sure. But we, so we recorded the whole movie with his own voice, reanimated those 10 minutes, which isn't horrible because yeah. it's really just yeah. uh, with CG, you just, you can go in and just. Even in, even in 2001 or 2004. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So reanimate the, some shots got longer, some shorter because yeah. of the new improvs. We got to get okay. some, some additional material, which yeah. was awesome. So then <clears throat> we show the movie about several months later again to 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 steven and jeffrey's there and everybody's there the producers are there and he goes oh, this is the funniest sweetest movie i've seen in this theater i still feel that way mike needs an accent come on i swear to god come on i swear there's no way so so <laughs> like we look at each other like well, he well, does well, Scottish. Give, give us a day. Give us a day. Right, because you had already had it all recorded, right? Oh my God! So, but we what what we ended up doing was um, this is why it cost ten million dollars. It wasn't it's like back Myers. and forth. Yeah. yeah. So we ended up with like a, what we called a Scottish light accents, and he, we got way more improvs this this other time got around. Looser. Yeah. So so we we uh, animated those ten plus the few more minutes that were um, had been added with the regular Mike accent. Yeah. And so we went back to the to the yeah. Scottish accent. And so don't blame anybody. I'm but not Steven, blaming. It sounds like 50 people I'll, need to be blamed. I'll, I'll blame him, but yeah. it was Steven Spielberg. There, <laughs> did I'll you, take the hit. Did no. you enjoy working with Mike Myers and Steven Spielberg? I mean, were they were these pleasurable experiences, or is it so stressful? So it is really stressful, but it's also super fun, and um, it's crazy. It's just yeah. crazy. So, 
you know, I mean, we don't record with them constantly. You know, we try to keep it to a couple times a year because mm -hmm. it takes about 18 months once the movie goes into actual production from the, the point where you start the pipeline move. Shots are going yeah, this, in. This and... is amazing. Because I've been watching during COVID, you're working on a film right now called Spellbound. Yeah. And that's where, that's why I started talking about how we were neighbors, because you, I actually had the privilege of seeing some of the scratch audio and some of the scratch don't, animation. Don't tell anybody that. I didn't tell but anybody. Yes. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see. Oh, you weren't, you weren't home. I, uh, Kirk and I were hanging out. He went to get more beers downstairs and I went into your computer and I hit play. And uh, no, It's cool. Yeah. So we're doing it all over Zoom for now, but we have, um, uh, I did get to pitch to a really big star in person. Who and is this? I can't tell you yet. Why not? Because. Let's have it. He, he said yes, but it's not signed, so I can't. But we have signed, um, well, Rachel's, Rachel Ziegler will mm -hmm. be our lead. Uh, we actually- Another went... Spielbergian, right? Yeah, that's true, from she West Side West Story. Story. Yeah, yeah. We, that was her first film, and we actually, our casting folks found her early on from work she'd done just on, you know, like YouTube and stuff. Oh. Fantastic voice. So we actually started recording with her a year ago, even though we only announced it like a week ago. I may have heard some of that when I was snooping Maybe. around in your office. I may, <laughs> I, I may have actually. Uh, we've got John Lithgow, um, who he's I worked great. with on on uh, Shrek, and he's fantastic. I love him to pieces. Yeah, these... we have Jennifer Lewis. Um, there's some other announcements coming. They've said yes, but we haven't announced yet. I don't so. know how you do it. Like the stress for me. Like let's just well, let's go back to Shrek. Let's revisit that because Mike Myers was not the original voice of Shrek. There was somebody else who passed away am i yeah. right yeah yeah so the original voice of shrek was who um chris farley chris farley uh i was not working on the movie at the time i oh. was uh finishing up work on the road to el dorado i was one of the um, production designers on the movie and but i did story work as well i did storyboards so that's kind of how i got into directing was you know pitching storyboards in right. in, in feature film you pitch it to a room in in animation for tv you kind of send your storyboards in and and a director works on him, but it's really it's more theatrical in in features, and yeah. and uh, uh, so out of, out of that experience, uh, I became a, one of the heads of story on Shrek, and then eventually one of the directors. But uh, you were not. There was another director that was involved in the project that was taken off. The I am project. director number five. No way, really. There, there were. Was there like a bullpen, like in baseball? Yeah. Like Next, you get, the, you get the phone call. Like, oh, get Jensen get him out. Get, get Jensen up in. here. Get her up here. <laughs> like you were just, you were animating on the film, weren't you? No, no, I was storyboarding. Okay, what's the difference? I mean, storyboarding is where you, it, yeah, it looks it, like a cartoon to me, right? A it, cartoon? It does, like a comic strip or Yeah, something. comic strip, yeah. Right, you break down uh, with just rough drawings uh, your your idea of how a scene could go. You gotta do that like a million times, throw them away, you find what finally works, and then you can begin um, putting it into what we call layout, which is where cameras are set, camera movement. Then it gets to the animator along with the final audio after recording with the with the talent. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, all like all these variables, like all like it's ever changing. Like you still don't you're you're working on this film and you're still waiting to sign people. Like <laughs> it would drive me it would drive me nuts. Yeah, well, it I'm would... I'm happily I'm not a producer right now, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the headaches are on my producer David Lipman's head. But, but yeah, uh, what 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 from your childhood? like sort of attracted you to animation? Uh, you know, our family uh, it was loud, um, talented. Uh -huh. um, my mom was from Costa Rica and they have a long uh, history of storytelling, just crazy ass stories from the family, ghost stories, um, uh, just, it, it's just kooky. And my dad loved, loved movies and he would go and rent um, a projector from the library and bring home 16 millimeter films. Wow. So we would watch things like Potemkin. The Kennedy assassination. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. A labor kid did though. So yeah. we all saw that at the neighbor's house, uh -huh. you know, but, but my dad brought, tried to bring home like, you know, Citizen Kane. And, uh, like I said, Potemkin, um, just short films, right. uh, uh, just, you know, Sullivan's travels, all these, these wonderful, Preston well, how Sturgis else did movies? people see movies at home at this time? This is before beta, before you waited VHS? till it came on TV. You know, we saw The Wizard of Oz once a year, and everybody would gather on the couch. You know, you'd so you could stories. go to the, the library and rent. You could really, you, yes, yeah, you could go to almost any library huh. and if you knew how to do the projector. Yeah, right. Yeah, 
That is, so, what, what happens if you snap it? Because, you know, sometimes you can snap a film in yeah. the middle and then they have to glue it together. I think and... my dad may have had some tape. Did you ever work with that old, the, the old cut and Yes, back... Paste and... Before, yeah, in TV animation, I was working uh, at Universal Cartoons and our editors were actually working with real film on old flatbeds and... Wow. Uh, yeah. So you were, your dad was part of your inspiration that you would have these family gatherings and you would watch these films and... Yeah. And you're one of how many siblings? We're six. Anybody else go into film? Uh, yeah, my older brother, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, he ended up having a, a quite a career in um, in TV. He was a, an assistant director. He worked on Murphy Brown, a, a lot of really big shows. And what's the difference between a TV director and a film director? That's a good question because I haven't actually directed TV yet, so um, I can't imagine it'd be all that different except very accelerated. Mm. <laughs> you yeah, have a eight day turnaround, something like that. Right, right. So Shrek's two thousand and one. It's nominated. It wins the Academy Award. Your life must change instantly it did um you know it was really kind of exciting for a while there uh, agents were coming you know knocking on the door <laughs> yeah, and their yeah. scripts stacked oh, up oh yeah they used to send real scripts out yeah the so. darling i remember that there used to be a messenger there would be a, they, they would say you know that by get it in by like five, if if you got an audition or something before like a certain time yeah there was a script running service right they would just run around town oh, and my god yeah every morning there'd be stacks outside there were like 27 uh, dresses and uh, just about all these movies I keep running across on Netflix like oh I, I read on that one and yeah I, I think I had a meeting on that one <laughs> and then it went to we'll send you a PDF with your name across it so yeah, you can't like yeah. you can't sell the pages or something and then now I've got to print the script because it took me years to fix uh, this is like before the iPad like oh I, yeah yeah so yeah. It's, yeah I don't know I always had a computer so well, not always. I like to sit there. I like now, paper. I, stuff on it. I don't it. like writing, reading books on, on, on. I had a Kindle for a while. I don't like it. Yeah. You can't remember where you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like the tactile, uh, you know, I know when a, at a certain part in the script that it happened when there's this many, right. this much thickness on this side of Your the script. Vis it's visual. Yeah. Yeah. It just helps you remember stuff. They say yeah. it's better for kids too, to, to, to read their assignments on on paper because right. you have your whole body is helping you remember information and it's nice to like go in and out and turn the page and go yeah. it's just yeah, it's nice like to it. feel something you know tangible so so then the next how did you decide what project to go to from i mean you know yeah i i you know at the time i was super into uh and i still love it is uh, being john malkovich and i was pushing my agents to find me something bizarre and cool and weird and um and uh, they said, well, a lot of that stuff is, you know, writer director, you know, you're going to have to write it if you want uh -huh. it. But, but there were a few, there was this one reverse superhero thing that would, might've been for Jack Black where uh, a, a guy, an ordinary human lands on a super planet mm. <laughs> and, and he, you know, he, he has no powers and becomes famous and sought after because he walks and everybody else flies. Oh, that's interesting. Somehow it plays into how he can save the planet. I think it was called the Walkman. That's great. Nobody knows what a Walkman is anymore, right. but at the time he was using it, and I don't know. It was it was adorable. There was yeah. another one called Grounded. A friend of mine, Paul Davidson, wrote that was a superhero that a super villain lands on Earth hmm. and um, and has to blend in because he's separated from his ship and his minions and that whatnot so well, there's becomes, a lot of going to this planet coming to this planet. yeah a lot of that and he, so he, i think he becomes like a science teacher at a yeah. high school while he's trying to figure out his evil plan to get back to you know running the um, the yeah. galactic empire it yeah. was really that i love that one that huh. was great never got made uh had never got made i worked that's the other thing about this business it just drives me nuts. nothing I ever know. gets made it's so much doesn't so much does and so much doesn't then i met i met danny rubin who wrote groundhog day uh -huh. and we're good friends hmm. and he had a fantastic script and we pursued it and pursued it we kept trying to get that made the producer was just sitting on it one of the producers from avatar just sat on it is just... this before groundhog's day or after? after so that's this is what i need people to understand it's like when people come up to me after shows and they go you need to have your own show you should be in movies why don't you write like i've written some great scripts if the guy who wrote Groundhog's Day can't get something made, what chance does a guy right? who's doing a podcast out of a 1963 Shasta trail on his backyard got? I've got zero. There's very few like clerks. There's very few like, I know. you know, that yeah. breakthrough people. You got to do it yourself. I've, I've written one about my husband's Irish band world. It's like a, a the commitments in reverse. And, uh. and I'd love to do that one next. And I'd rather just 
you know, clout crowdsource some, some, you know, I'm some good money. for 10 bucks. Okay, great. 10 bucks great, for great. me. I'm willing to yeah, commit right now. You know, when you involve a, 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 you know, investors, then they get an opinion. <laughs> right. When so. you, then you're dealing with a Steven Spielberg who says uh, no accent. All I love accent. Steven Spielberg. I love him. What is he like as a person? Very nice. Super nice. No, no. I never didn't like work with him directly, but I've had so many meetings where he's there. Is he that? Does he's, he have a powerful presence? No, he has a teddy bear presence. This is what I love about this trailer. The light just came back in, and now I, I believe my camera. I'm, I'm better lit. Oh, yeah, with the, this the sort of clouds are changing. Yeah, they're there. changing. It's variable lighting. We shoot with variable lighting. <laughs> this is very, you know, avant garde. <laughs> <You could, laughs> that would be funny if you added a wave to that light. With like the waves, we're gonna have like um, wind and film noir, trash blowing by. <laughs> this is cinema verite. <laughs> this is someday there'll be uh, parents showing their kids this in you know in their homes on you know sixteen millimeter or whatever that uh, whatever that. So that how do we, so the next. Big project, I'm going to guess, in 2004, is Shark Tale. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's a, another huge hit. It's so funny because I didn't intend to be a part of that. To make it a hit? <laughs> no, I just didn't intend to be part of it. I thought I'd be on my way out to do live action. Because, look, animation was never my goal and aim in life. Come I, on, you're a ske- I've seen your drawings. I draw. Fantastic. I thought I'd be a painter yeah. or illustrator or something like that. And getting into animation was like a summer job and it just never mm. ended. So, you know, one thing led to another. My career grew without me even thinking about it. I never intended to, to make movies. Right. You know, I found the first time I directed uh, like an eight minute uh, short for, uh, I think it was Baby Huey or something yeah. like that. Like, oh, I like this. So I applied to AFI um, for their directing, you know, women directors yeah. program, uh, which was very selective. And uh, they they claimed they were looking for people outside of just, you know, right live action, or they wanted people with different perspectives and right. different backgrounds and and coming at it from a different place. So I thought, well, I'm an, ar- an artist. I'll come right. at it. So they, they, and I, I had a plan B, which was I'll apply to DreamWorks to follow this directing bug that I got. So if I turn me down, hmm. so I oh. applied to DreamWorks, got in. Um, and then several years later, if I had me come back and speak to a group of students and, and I got to rub that in, that they, they, turned, me <laughs> they down. turned me down. <sighs> yeah. But, but, uh, um, but didn't you work at Hanna-Barbera? I worked at Hanna-Barbera. I was a background painter on... Flintstones on the Smurfs. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, look, I grew up yeah. on the Flintstones. There was a, another iteration oop, that came in yeah. later, so I'm not that old. But, right, right. But uh, yeah, so I started it. I worked my way up. You know, I was a cell painter for a while while I was babysitting. I would paint cells, and yeah. then I was painting backgrounds. Right. Then I was designing backgrounds on He-Man. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then I got into storyboard, which was right. the first taste of directing, because you'd get a script and you'd like decide, okay, so. Start drawing. Right. Is this a close-up? Is this an establishing shot? I learned a lot about. This is a, it feels know. like there's a lot of collaboration, maybe more so in animation rather than other films. Oh, because, it's a team sport. Yeah, these these people drawing. That's a huge tonally and all that sort of. Yeah, you're you know you're directing many many departments just like you are in live action, but but you can't just send prop people out to go get a spoon or a cup or a chair or go mm-hmm. to a location like oh let's use that. You have to design everything. Wow. So people come at you and uh, with a a CG image of like a log. Is this the log that Come you would on. like for that really? scene? Really? The log has to be approved? It has to be approved. Oh, I'd go nuts. I don't know how you do this. I've been following the process. <laughs> You're waiting to decide. I just, it's too, I just want to turn the cameras on, start recording. Comics are very impatient. We want to get up on stage. We want the laugh. We wrote the joke that day. We want the laugh. So Shark Tale starred uh, Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> did he slap anybody he was i'm telling you that guy was the kindest uh-huh. most present person ever uh he d- would drop everything and just be ready to go and oh, and yes. no no smiling laughing happy kids were always there his brothers yeah you know he it was a family affair one time he came in and he was a a a, a little distracted you know he was on the the phone. I don't think it was a BlackBerry then. I think it was maybe later than that. But, um, and uh, and I had just started working with a, a, a Judith Weston because um, I was preparing for live action. Who, who is that? She is a, a directing mentor. Just oh. she wrote some fabulous books, uh, directing actors mm-hmm. and the director's intuition. 
and she had classes. And I, right after Shrek, I started studying with her um, to better understand actors and how right. to direct them. Anyway, so I was like flush with all this crazy, you know, exercises in my head. And so, so I could see he was distracted and was sort of out of his head. So, so I'm like, okay, wait, wait, let me try something. You know, because what, what I always start a session is I, we read through the pages, say, let's read the whole thing out loud. Okay. Let's just listen to the words. Don't worry about performance. So he had started to record and was very flat, which was mm. unlike him because he usually just like gets in it anyway, yeah. even if it's just a run through. So I go, oh, all right, hang on a second. Let me come in there. So I come into the into the booth and I have uh, one of our story artists who's great with voices, Sean Bishop, uh, reading with him. Right. So I say, Sean, come here. OK, Will, here. And I give Will a pillow. Sorry. Take this pillow and throw it to, at Sean and, and ask him, uh, just say something like, it's like a Meisner exercise yeah, yeah, or something. Just... I don't know. Judith, what was it? I can't remember <laughs> what that exercise is. Anyway, uh, um, are you happy? And then yeah. Sean, you throw it back and say, what do you mean by happiness? And yeah. I just, you guys just re re repeat that for a while and just pick yeah. up on whatever. So he looks at me. <laughs> he goes, do you do this with Robert De Niro? Ah, that's what I would say. <laughs> and he goes, all right, all right. Pretend I'm Robert De Niro. Sean, throw, throw the pillow at me. So, so uh, first of all, he throws the pillow at Sean. Sorry, he, he goes, goes, are you happy? And, he, and then so Sean goes, well, what do you mean by happy? And it hits him in the chest and without him even grabbing it, and it falls to the floor. And he goes, what the fuck do you mean by happiness? Ah. And he was just having a laugh. Yeah. Like, he goes, that's the last time I listened to you when you say, don't worry about performance. Uh, right. But it was all in jest and all yeah. in fun. He was playful and and personable and do you think he always a doll. Do you think he recovers from this incident? If anybody can, he can. But uh, you know, violence is violence, and that was very disturbing and distressing for for everybody. And I I know uh, you know I'm in the academy. I wasn't part of those sessions, but I can only imagine how they agonized over how to to deal with it because he's always been one of the most lovable. Right. actors but in that moment he sank into the body of a of his 11 year old yeah super hurt you know it was self even, yeah you know, you know it was even scarier more or ask you know that was so violent the slap but when he was yelling keep your wife's mouth out that there was a violence yeah. to that the body you know your body when you get angry it stays angry for a while you yeah. get filled with it and even when I have fights with Kirk, you know, we're like, <laughs> we're like, okay, I understand. And I've apologized or you've apologized, but my body is still angry. So let me just sit with this for a second. Wait a minute. Is marriage work? Is it difficult? Is this a bit I can work on? Is there some <laughs> truth to what I say? Now, why wasn't James Gandolfini in Shark Tale? I pitched to him and, uh, and he loved everything. He loved the material. The artwork is so fun. Um, it, he got what we were trying to do, this sort of mobster story, but set in kind of a hip hop underwater world. And, and, but he felt like he was just, he had just come off Sopranos and his son was very young. And he just thought, I just don't want my boy to think that all I do is this character. Oh, interesting. And so, and which is so ironic because now his son is playing his young yeah. girl, soprano self. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I read that there was some pinhead, some actor that didn't want to do it because he didn't want to be animated to look like an ogre or something. Who was that? There was somebody oh. else. I don't know if I wrote the name well, down. I wouldn't have... See, I didn't join uh, Shrek until after... Well, do you read the Wikipedia page? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> I think it's so strange because like, I, all this stuff is like stuff I've really sort of taken in in the last like 24 hours as uh -huh. I start to really... You know, get into because I don't Google friends. I don't Google people yeah. I date. Like I just I like <laughs> to get to know people, and then like, oh look at this whole life, and I'm reading like all these quotes and stuff like that, and reading about the Mike Myers, and you know what? Was... But but yeah, no, Chris Farley was on it, but I was on on uh, Road to El Dorado when that finished. Um, they asked me to come over and help on on Shrek as a story artist because Chris Farley passed away, and they were trying to figure out what to do with the story. Wow. The story well, well, why was... does the story have to change if the voice? Well, if the story hadn't wasn't exactly working look you go through that when you develop a story in animation you go through so many versions you're like well should it be this should it be that how does it not feeling right maybe we should take this part out and it's very it's like clay you know yeah. you're really shaping it so it wasn't that because he passed away it wasn't working it was just it you know it was in its natural state of you know was there any, shambles was there any chance <laughs> yeah once farley died that they were just going to scrap the whole project i don't know it could have been it could have been but uh so 
there, you know, I, a few people made attempts at trying to find a way to resurrect it. There was a, a team that did a test, a CG test. Everybody was using the same little clip of Chris Farley, you know, the ogres and onions bit, which has yeah. st stayed in the movie from the Chris Farley version where donkey's like, Oh, you're like, like you got layers and that, that scene. Yeah. So, um, somebody had tried to do that with some crazy new technology and it looked really horrible and cost a lot of money and they buried it, you know? Um, the Andrew was on the movie. Um, uh, and so was my friend Kelly Asbury who, who passed away, um, last year, I think, uh, wonderful guy. Um, I love Kelly and working with him. Oh, he's such a doll. Mm. Um, he wanted to work on spirit of the simmer on the, the, the one about the horses, the 2d yeah. one he was going to direct that with, uh, Lorna cook. So he expressed an interest to, to depart, um, to Jeffrey. The writers uh, connected really well with me. I'd been a head of story along with Randy Cartwright on the mm -hmm. movie for a while. Um, when I saw a screening when they were trying to pull me in as a board artist, um, I, the screening I saw, there were a lot of really funny bits and they were, and then there were other bits that were more action adventure -y. Mm. And And I, I wanted the funny, goofy, yeah. out of the box bits. And they had been storyboarded by a bunch of my friends I work with on Ren and Stimpy. So that these are people I know, the vegans, the group of vegans. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no. Just got a group of friends that are vegans that have <laughs> attacked me. <laughs> one of them, one of them was Conrad Verdon. Yeah. A, who, he's a, he's a, he's a big animation director now. Con yeah. Conrad Vernon well, and the voice of the gingerbread man. Why? I would think that the studio and we'll get back to your story would, would think this is Farley's last film. Let's keep those parts and let's find a voice actor that can do something similar. And just yeah. sort of patch it together. I mean, you think there'd be a lot of money selling it as Farley's last film? No, it, it, the the actor is so involved. It'd be like trying to, you know, if somebody only shot ten minutes of a movie and then you were going to CG in their face for the rest of the movie, no. it, it, you just wouldn't do but that. But I'd read that he'd done fifty percent of the film, like he had already. But been... it, but it was so early in the story stages yeah. that the story was evolving. So they so... can go back. Have you ever worked with an actor that just refused to do another take? That just said, "No, you got it." No. No. So even like a De Niro, as big as De Niro is, he's patient, he's working with you, he listens to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, again, I was coming in hot from one of those classes, and I'm like, so what do you think about it? And he's like, I don't want to do any of that. Let's just do the work. I'm like, okay, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I go back in the booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we start to work. But after that, you know, we he, he was a doll. Yeah. Honestly, he had so much fun. He loved coming in to record. Yeah. What? Yeah was working with Eddie Murphy, one of my heroes. I mean, and again, you have to put an asterisk because now you look back at his stand-up, it's, it's homophobic, it's misogynistic, uh, but one of the most likable people I've ever seen on stage. Uh, what, what was he like? Uh, look, he was actually probably the most professional person mm. I've ever worked with. Um, we actually got the chance to go and work at his house. He has a recording studio like underground next to the pool or something and next wow. to the bowling alley out in new jersey and maybe i shouldn't say that. No, 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 you, <laughs> it's on google earth i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure it is um he so you have to fly into new jersey to record this with yeah, him? yeah yeah one time we we did that so uh but he was well he that was one time he was late hmm. to his own house to his own <laughs> so we watched a movie with one of his bodyguards. Oh, really? What movie? Oh, one of his? God, what did we watch? I don't remember. I met, I, this is, I'm not going to say who the famous, it's one of a really famous actor. And um, I had gone out on a date with a woman and she had gone out on a date with him. And she said that uh, after dinner, we went back to his house and he put on one of his movies. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we watched that. I can't remember what we watched. Training Places? I mean, this guy's. Oh, I love that one. Oh, oh my I God. love that one. Yeah, but, uh, again, racist. Yeah, he... it's a, it's racist themes. It's, I don't, I don't uh... know what I can say. I like. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I don't like anything. I've never liked anything in my past. Nothing has influenced me. I just, you know, it's just <laughs> you've got to protect yourself now. But yeah, no. See, well, he wasn't a chit chatty type. He he wouldn't come out and and you know just hang. Yeah. You know he he'd come in. We'd we'd show him the artwork. We'd show yeah. him we'd pitch out a story sequence. You know yeah. that he yeah. was going to record. He loved it. He would pay attention. He'd like focus in like, okay, what about this area here? This drawing here, you know, what's happening? What? So what's donkey? Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. So he, he'd really be internal. And then as soon as we'd start, he, he was bam, he was, he was donkey. So he wasn't funny. He wasn't entertaining. He wasn't, uh, 
yeah, I didn't really like hang out that way. You know, oh. Cameron was the opposite. Cameron Diaz was just so funny. She, she just. What's her home recording studio like? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think she has one. She, she did travel with like, she, you know, we, we asked her to um, record like an additional hour so we could leave her alone for maybe, right. you know, the next six months. Yeah. And she's she, cause she had wanted to go. She's like, okay, all right. Almost. Is there any candy out there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's candy. Yeah. Like, good. Okay. So she reaches in her bag and pulls out like a turkey leg or a chicken leg and starts eating that like for, for energy. But why it was in the bag, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. That's disgusting. Was it just, was it in a Ziploc in the bag or? I never saw the Ziploc, uh, a Ziploc. I'm assuming it must've been in the bag and she just left that behind have you ever seen this show it's called border patrol and they they they, they go to the airports and like they'll bust people for drugs and sometimes they're going through people's bags and there's like a raw turkey that they brought from another country <laughs> or like some sort of weird food like it sort of reminds me of that <laughs> she just was prepared i think she like was just all totally these prepared. actors uh including myself as a performer we we're, there's some quirky shit going on right like like everybody's what's... weird we're like, but do they weird. warn you ahead of time? Do they go, "Hey, Jack Black's coming in," and just so you know, Jack does this or whatever? Like, no, he was cool. I think I think Mike was on a special diet, so we had to have plates of hot dogs. What kind of diet is? I that? think it was an early version of keto. This is what I want to be on: <laughs> hot dog diet. <laughs> but then you know how production is; they they go overboard. He probably just requested a yeah a, a, a hot dog or you know all beef. Yeah. Something, you know, it, and they end up bringing like 28 of them as if, you know, anybody could eat 28. See, my dream is to do animation so I don't have to diet. <laughs> That's right. I just want to get fat and then you, people can come over to the trailer. You can record me here. Yeah, and no makeup involved. No. Yeah. 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 I mean, I barely try anymore. You know, I'm filming something now and I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm trying to lose the last five, but I'm not, you know, starving. Who cares? You this, got a big movie coming it's, out. It's all, there's so much content out there. Who can, who cares? <laughs> who cares so how many days did you record eddie murphy i was hoping there was gonna be some great story about eddie murphy and how funny he was and he was doing voices and he comes down from, to his home recording studio and he's wearing the the blue leather suit i'm gonna share a, a, a very okay, uh, weird one okay good great this is a weird story great. uh so yeah no, i'm gonna get in trouble what are they gonna do take my birthday away no he he came in to record mm -hmm. suit diamond earring awesome looks sharp very low key, very low key. We start recording. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mellow. And he goes, excuse me a second, goes after the car, comes back full of vim and vigor and energy. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, and we record for another hour. Maybe a, a chicken leg he had? Same thing happens, goes out. So, so, uh, so I, we move on to the next sequence after lunch. And I come in to talk to him about the sequence and the yep. pages like here, you know, we're just going to pick up these lines, blah, 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 blah. And, and then as I'm leaving, I, I go, um, so can I, can I get you anything? And I look straight <laughs> at him like, uh, Coke. <laughs> and then he looks, he's looking at the pages. He looks up at me, he lifts an eyebrow and I go, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Ballsy. And then he, he was like, <clears throat> wow. Wow. Well, those were the days. Yeah, I guess. I guess I missed it. I don't I know. Never, I'm never... not saying. I'm All right. You're just, just saying like he. It was my. Maybe he went out. He had a chicken bone. You know, <laughs> not the, what did Cameron have? The a turkey. <laughs> chicken leg. Chicken leg. <laughs> a turkey. Yeah. Maybe he was eating. That. Yeah, who knows? We're not going to say, know. you know, I don't you know, want to say. So you're not on social media, right? Like if No, I am. Oh, you are. What do you want? I'm on Instagram. Follow me there because Insta? I give, uh, I've got lots of artwork there from other for my movies, because I do a lot of artwork. I know, so I see it at your house. It's fantastic. Production it's really design, good. art directing, storyboards. You'll find all that stuff on on it's uh, on Instagram. I'm uh, Vicky Jensen one. one. I don't know why I got stuck with a one. Who Somebody took, took your name? <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And originally, I wanted to have you on because you you have your own secret, but you're not going to share it, which is really <laughs> it's such a good family secret why I know, not because they'll kill me I, I i understand i wouldn't share it either but uh, we're sitting on a story and maybe at some point some point you'll tell it because it's like it's like it's my own documentary in my head that <laughs> i have of something yeah. that happened in your life yeah, don't everybody has tragedies don't but... uh yeah don't don't say anything but it it's so interesting i completely respect you not <laughs> wanting to say anything but 
do you think that that has shaped your past at all having this family secret yeah oh yeah i think it does um you know stories are told and lies are are kept you know so stories are are not told so there are secrets yeah. i'll say i'm named for my dad's um psychiatrist victor i don't know his last name so wow that's interesting so you know, yeah because of all this but but uh um look every family has their tragedies and their dark stories and back in the day you know you didn't share that with kids so one or two of us would find this out mm -hmm. and then they'd be the one to break the news to the others because it was kind of like a scoop right you know and then that sibling ends up really despising you for many decades because you're the one that broke that news and somehow wow. became associated with it and blamed and like but 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 wow. i thought you knew you know so there's <laughs> so, a lot of family drama behind the they, secret oh wait yeah. always but what i don't understand is why isn't this being brought into some project or film like not talking about your secret but just a film about family secrets well family well the, the one i'm working on right now is about a family going through a, a real spellbound. hefty transition yeah, yeah spellbound and so we found an allegory an allegory for that that um transition and in this case it's uh, a, a young girl of uh, princess of Lumbria, who whose parents, the king and queen, are suddenly turned into beasts by a horrible spell. Hmm. And she believes she's the one who can break it, not only to change them back, but to save her kingdom from the darkness that's spreading over Whoa. over the kingdom because of this spell. Don't they have to fall back in love in order to break the spell? Is that... Um, you know, well, we're, we're, we're trying not to do the... Don't tell me I just gave away the entire movie! Don't tell no. me I just cost the studio millions of dollars. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, it. She she's seeking a happy ending and yeah. she does get one, just not quite the one that she thought would happen. Are you... It's a musical with Alan Menken and yeah. Glenn Slater doing the songs. Fantastic. Chris Montan, who was the music producer on everything you can think of from, you know, uh, Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast. It just all the, How much fun is this? This is the funnest thing ever. Hard work, but super, super fun. These guys are great. When is the last time you directed a feature film like this, an animated film? Not since um, Shark Tale. There were two I was developing at, um, at DreamWorks. There was a big transition in leadership there. Yeah. So a lot of movies got shelved. And so the, the two, the one I was preparing for production got shelved. Wow. So you didn't, I thought maybe you took time off. Uh, yeah, and on IMDb, it's like this big vacancy. And like, that's what happens in animation. You spend so much time before you even start production. Right. And it happens a lot. People will work on something and it gets so shelled. Have you been, were you scared? Were you yes. career scared for the last I was living, 15 years? I was living on on a, a, a line of credit. Come on. To pay my mortgage. No, really? Yes. I was writing frantically, writing movies. Up until like a them. couple of years ago? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was close. I, my my agent, uh, Craig Costell, his doll, um, uh, hooked me up with Skydance. They were uh, getting ready to start their first their animated movies. Their producing Spellbound. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I didn't yeah. know it got that. See, it's so interesting. You don't know what people... I figure you do a movie like shrek you never work another day in your life that there's just ordinarily that would be true so when i went into live action um uh i met on a lot of movies um uh didn't get anything until i met ivan reitman and mm -hmm. and his team at um at montecito pictures and he said yes right away to this quirky little movie a script i'd been sent called ticket to ride and it was so similar to my family it was just this quirky ass family um all their crazy you know behaviors and and this young girl who just graduated um and and was supposed to you know move on mm -hmm. to her adult life yeah. and was having trouble you know some yeah. difficulty in launching yeah so i loved it it was so kooky you know yeah, and yeah. so i pitched to him back all my ideas and what my family blah, blah. he's like hired boom wow great. nobody does that yeah. nobody yeah. does that so um it was a super amazing experience but the movie didn't do that well it, was, it ended up being called postgrad right and we were paired with a uh a, an arm at at um fox that was called atomic pictures or atomic bomb i can't remember hmm. anyway um and they had a different take on the movie than i did with ivan so we wanted yeah. this quirky little thing All right and and i 
I had a friend score it and you know all this stuff. and they wanted something more like legally blonde and right. the movie just wasn't that yeah. so there was a lot of but it was hot and that's what they chased so yeah so there was some legally creative blonde. differences and that that division dissolved before our movie came out so we uh, were effectively orphaned um so you know it, it was universally panned uh -huh. the 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 oh, reviews were horrible oh. except roger ebert said he gave it three stars and wanted a sequel i love it and Ro Ro roger ebert defended me at a time so did he really yeah he did yeah, he's awesome yeah he was awesome yeah he, yeah. he was that's... so but that led to me be going into director jail yeah women don't get out of director jail really it looks like Not you did back in the day it looks well, like you did I, for animation how does that but... happen there's an actual jail for the, the uh... <laughs> Female, so they segregate the female and the male directors because this <laughs> right. director, you know, yeah, you don't get the, the scripts, too. you don't get the oh. meetings. Um, you know, uh, um, it's 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 around this time that that uh, only Craig Castell really stood by me, yeah, and so I, you know, I, I and I'm he became my agent, and, and I'm sure you're, him. you're thinking I'll just develop my own projects, I'll put I my did. own money into, yeah, yeah, I did, I put a lot of money, yeah, oh my god, I chased this one movie at Warner Brothers, um, uh, but this was before post-grad I was trying to do like what Zack Snyder did like he spent you know he created a a, a, a teaser for yeah. 300 and, yeah. and to, to show them what he was doing so I tried to do the same thing for this movie based on the, the books of uh, Alfred Kropp um, he was like a modern day kid not right. a knight he was going to become a knight but it, like as if knights of the realm still existed today as a secret spy organization oh it was a super cool book yeah. series right so I, I, I swear to God, I spent probably close to $30,000. I had, I did a pre test to show uh, as a woman, I can direct action. So it was yeah. this cool motorcycle chase, right? Yeah. So we did it with CG uh, as pre you know, pre-visualization. Pre mm -hmm. um, I had a movie poster made to show how yeah. cool it could be and all, all kinds of stuff. Right. And, um, uh, can't believe what I did, and and then, so I go in there and I pitch to <laughs> and the, the whole time you're Warners. cheerleading yourself. I got this. I'm I had managers. Take the world. Yeah. I had agents. Yeah, and they're all like, "This is amazing. This is fantastic." Yeah. Yeah. I go in there, I pitch it, and and I meet the head of Warner Brothers, and he's like, Peter Roth. No, oh. back then, uh, Kevin was something. Oh, I should remember the last name. Ah, my 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 brain is like a sieve, and so he he goes, "Wow, this is great. This yeah. is great," and he looks at his assistant and like. Did we did we actually um, buy that series? And like, no, no, we didn't. Oh, well, anyway, thank you. They didn't even fucking wow. own the. Sorry, they didn't even yeah, 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 have yeah. The, the, the the rights. The rights. Yeah, that's crazy. The rights. I don't see. This is why I don't know how. I don't know how I do what I do, and you know what I mean, and keep my spirits up, and yet I get to perform every week, and I get to do stuff like this. It's just like at some point, like you know, I, I was on that series, Team Wolf. We're doing the movie now. I I enjoy. Just getting a script and just showing up. I you know. Don't, you I don't know. make as much money, but you're not involved in every sort of like... It's hard. I've been on this movie uh, four years, yeah. uh, almost five. Longest I've been on any movie. This and... one that you're working on now? Yes, This yes. has been going on for four or five years? Yes. So what... But not because I'm bad. So what got you... I know, I know. <laughs> not because I'm inept or anything. What got you out of jail? Uh, well, this, this did, this did. Somebody yeah, I did shot. some, I did some, uh, uh, web shorts, some comedy shorts, yeah. and I did uh, a pile of commercials for Old Navy for a little while there. Um, that was after Postgrad came out. So that was fine. Yeah. Anonymous content. I, at the time I was the only woman director they had. Huh. I had a campaign. Uh, we did over 40 commercials and they kept telling me, you don't understand. Directors don't get the entire campaign. A campaign is created, and then we'll put different directors on it. Yeah, it. So I did all the Old Navy commercials with the mannequins that had personalities. Yeah, so you're very cognizant. You're very aware being a female director, because you keep saying woman director. Like, if I showed up and you were directing me, I would just think you're a, di a director. I don't... Well, good. I would hope that was true, and I, and I believe one day we will get there. And I didn't go in thinking I'm a woman director going after a movie. I because you I have feel no, that. You I, feel well, that? Late in the last few years, yeah, huh. like I I met on on Mulan, on the the, the new Mulan. Again, I prepared for that. I made a book of art right. of stuff, you know, right. and and just uh, and the producer I met with was like, "Boy, you're saying all the right things. This yeah. is really great. It's just that my higher ups are kind of risk adverse, and that's because I had been in director jail and came from animation. So 
they weren't going to go that way with me. Um, somehow other directors will say male will have flop after flop after flop and expensive flop. Wow. They will, they will sink yeah. giant movies and yeah. get another movie. Yeah. Why is that happening? Where, where, you know, I've been told by producers, no, we tried a, a woman once. Huh. Do you think it's because you don't know the difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon? Do you think that has something to do with it? <laughs> but I do, do know the do difference. Do you know the difference? That is the biggest tablespoon I've ever seen. Well, this is this is a full this is this is tablespoon. It's for plant it, food, it's, so it's not Well, it's like, for my roses, which yes. are blossoming beautiful. But look at the dip yeah, I agree. That's look a very at, big tablespoon. I agree versus the teaspoon. But why do you know where this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Just say big scoop, little scoop, right? <laughs> yes. That's what it comes down to. Let's end on a very light note. You're, this is, uh, Vicki Jensen, you're amazing. I was only going to do a half hour. We're at an hour. Ooh. I'm not going to edit this. Uh, my father's going to be upset. You know, I got criticism on uh, episode uh, 49. My dad said, no, uh, podcast should be longer than 30 minutes. Oh, that was his feedback. Sorry, so then I, then I tried on, on 50 and that was like 44 minutes. So I hope my dad finds this. He, my dad and my parents both love when I interview people. They think this is where I, this is what I should be doing is just interviews. Big, <laughs> we still haven't fans. finished half the stories. No, is there another one you want to tell no, before no. we get out of here? <laughs> we, you can come back. This is, I mean, it's a testament to you that we're at an hour and two. I was very nervous about interviewing you because Aww. you're a friend and I, I don't want you to leave here, you know, go back and tell your husband on me. He didn't, uh, he didn't take it seriously. It wasn't good. It wasn't interesting. He cut me off. I didn't, did I cut you off? Ever? No. Cause I, okay, good. All right. So this if anything, is, I cut you off, but you're allowed. I'm to. an interrupter. You're allowed what? to, you're allowed to. <laughs> How long have you had blue hair for? <laughs> That's what I want to know. A couple of years. A couple of years. At least. I love it. This is a new segment. We, that we're premiering it on this episode. This is called... Here, I'll show off my hair the best I can. There you go. Are you, are you ready? Vicki Jensen, director. I want to thank you for having, <laughs> having for coming on to What's Wrong With the One Adams. Coming to Big Yellow. I call the podcast uh, studio Big Yellow. Yeah. It's actually... The Shasta. The Shasta. You had a Shasta. I had a Shasta. We had a Shasta. That yeah. you actually but used. This big. Yes, yes. Oh, this, this is one. Big. I don't know how you get out of your yard. With well, a this, crane. It did. It was craned in. Yeah. But I don't want, you know, I want people to know that. Uh, Sorry. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my basement, I have a secret uh, voiceover <laughs> studio. This is a new segment. You finally snorted. That's how I know you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Five questions yes. your husband has always wanted to ask you, but would rather I ask you. Did you talk to him? Oh. <laughs> you Qu set me up. Question number one. Have you seen my other fleece glove? The story is she borrowed just one to hold something cold, and I've never seen it since. That was only a favorites. week ago. It will turn up, I promise. Where is it? I, like if to know. I knew that, he wouldn't be asking you. Well, I, it's in the. Is it in the house? It, is it? Ev yeah, it's somewhere in the house. No chance you throw it out. I, you know, I, I do. I get credit for finding everything. I don't know. I'm not at your. Because you know, you know, like where's the milk? <sighs> Top shelf. Of what? The fridge. Right. You know, so I right. know where everything is. I lose one thing. Where could it be? What were you holding that was cold? I can't. still can't figure it out. Uh, cold or hot or uh, something reason I needed a glove. Right. Okay. So that, it may be gone. Uh, no, it's there. Okay. Well, keep me updated. I'd like to know. I'd like to update the listeners. Two. Number two, your question that your you husband- You lose one glove. Your husband wants to know, how do you turn the jacuzzi on? Ah, uh, I've written instructions in Sharpie on tape, so- you got to push the button in next to the water line yeah. and then choose whether you want hot or, or not hot. It's very complicated. Why it's Two why? buttons. Well, that's for Kirk. Do you know your husband? That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, and he's a handy guy. He should oh, he's know very, him. yeah, he's an architect. Yeah, he's very handy. He should know that. Uh, he wants to know because I guess he <laughs> promises to take you to a lot of places, but then he doesn't. No, he, 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 he remembers... He has places that he loves, but he doesn't remember whether he's taking me there. For instance, a sentence yeah. like this may come from Kirk. Yeah. Okay. Have I taken you to Iceland? Have I ever... Oh, it's more like, have I ever taken you to Iceland? No. But he he asks... He says, I can't remember. Have I taken you to Yellowstone yet? This is a typical question. Yes, he has. But he's serious about this. this yes, is not... he's serious. But he'll, it'll be, it doesn't matter what country. He'll go, have I ever taken you to Australia? If he's thinking about going to Australia, have I ever taken you to Australia? No, because you haven't been there either. But does this worry us? Is this, is this signs of dementia? Is no, this, it's this just, early signs it's of. It's just, he's happy. He lives in a very good 
golden happy bubble. He really does. Yeah, he's he lives in a very happy bubble. And it doesn't take much to make him happy. Like last week, I was concerned. <laughs> I've got a beer fridge here in the Shasta for some some guests or if I have people over, and I bought some of the beer uh, pre COVID shutdown. And I thought I had read online that beer can go bad. And so, you know, like one of those spammy, uh, you might be storing your beer all wrong. So I invite, he's Irish, he's an expert. I invite, he's so happy just testing <laughs> oh, yeah. different beers. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, the fourth question from your husband. Can eggshells go in compost? Yes, they can. They can. Are you yes. sure? Yeah, I've put them there. Yeah, I crumble them up a little first. Yeah. Because you'll see big pieces otherwise once you have soil and you're, planting your roses and you'll see big shells. I think the real question is, can eggs go in a garbage disposal? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't think they it's... They clog easily. They clog easily. It's not yeah. good. And the fifth question of the new segment, five questions your husband has always wanted <laughs> to ask you, but would rather not... Uh, rather, I ask you, number five, mom has decided she wants to live with us full time forever. <laughs> Are you okay with that? <laughs> I'm okay with that. You, I'm already sure? sad. She's going back tomorrow well, to I think Seattle. Yes. And I'm, I've been sad for several days. Yeah. Kirk's mom has been staying with, and she's this beautiful, young She's a pocket, spirit. pocket mother-in-law. I, I can fit her in here. Yeah, but she... In fact, Diane... She's in there. There she is. Pull out your, uh, <laughs> your uh, turkey... Boom. She gets dressed up like for the Super Bowl. She gets She dresses to the to, to the nines. And she drinks for more, everything. More than me and Kirk combined. And she's got a mouth on her. Yeah. yeah she sassy. really does. This yeah. is uh your Randy husband. Randy and Sassy. Yes, this is your husband playing the theme, and at the theme I played at the beginning, that wasn't it, is this is you guys actually on a yeah, boat. Yeah, we're on our boat in San Diego. Yeah, and, and, I, and that's your husband Kirk. Yeah, and I jump in there somewhere. At the end, yeah. Yeah. Well, walking. There you go. I'm going to bring it all the way down. I want to thank you very much for coming in. Oh, super fun. This is, this is really fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. So, so, thank you. And stick around. I'm going to talk now about a guy in Sarasota was actually taking notes during my show. I caught him. I put the clip up on Patreon, but I'm going to discuss it here on the podcast. And uh, then once again, this is going to be the longest podcast ever. So, you know, <laughs> great. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. That was fun. That was fantastic. Welcome back. Episode 51, What's Wrong with Orny Adams? I want to thank my guest, Vicki Jensen. I don't think that could have gone any better. I really enjoyed talking to her and just really interesting stories. Find her on social media. Uh, so watch her new movie, Spellbound. You've probably seen Shrek and Shark Tale, but thank you for being honest. And, you know, the episode started a little, it was a little clunky, a little clunky start for me because I was trying to do a bit about tablespoon versus teaspoon because it's always, it's, it drives me nuts. I, I've never really known the difference. I know that a tablespoon is bigger, but, you know, when you're doing a recipe or you're in the heat of the moment, the abbreviations are just too similar. That's what I was complaining about. Tablespoon, they do a capital T and then it has a B in it. It's like uh, TBSP. Whereas a teaspoon, TSP, but they sound similar. The abbreviations are similar. It's just too similar. Like, I don't even know, like, what is a teaspoon? Why did they come up with tea? This is what I'm, I was trying to get at. Like, why not tablespoon, which, and uh, coffee spoon? Just make them different. But anyway, I, I, I was excited because miracle Grow did it right. They said, uh, they said tablespoon for the snobs that can tell the difference. And then for the idiots like me... They spelt it out. Big side of the scoop. Big side of the scoop. Look, at here's the scoop. I'm showing people. And then we're going to get to my clip in Sarasota. Here's the big side of the scoop. And here's the... And I forgot to wash my hands after touching this before. And then I went inside and ate some almonds. And uh, I've got rose fertilizer all over me. So now I'm probably going to grow roses. Anyway, thank you. Thank you to my guest, Vicky. And thanks for sticking around. Uh, on my Patreon... And by the way, if you want to keep in touch, the address for this podcast is uh, what's uh, what's wrong at orneyadams.com. You can go to teamwhatswrong.com. It's a website that has all the links for where the audio is, basically Spotify and Apple iTunes and Google and some other places. The video for this will be up on Patreon. It's five bucks a month. You get all the episodes. You support me. I appreciate it. It's patreon.com slash orney. Okay. Uh, simple. And uh, the older episodes, 
uh, are up on YouTube. And I mean, like the first 30 or so are up on YouTube. Uh, this started out as an audio podcast and it turned into a video podcast. And uh, But uh, I, I do want to thank the Patreon uh, users. And if you're a, a Patreon MVP, uh, that's the highest level, you get some comedy clips. And I put this one up a few weeks ago from Sarasota. And I want to talk about it now. I was doing a show in Sarasota, which I love. Sarasota, that, that, that club is just perfect for me. It's older people. Uh, they listen. The show starts at 7, <laughs> maybe 6.30, the first show. And then we get them out. We get the next people in. Every show, there's something weird. There was a woman sketching me in the front row, uh, basically drawing a, uh, you know, like I was on trial, doing a, a court scene sketch. I thought she was looking at her phone the whole time. And she gave it to me. Uh, I talked about that on the uh, podcast episode with Jamie Kennedy. It might have been like uh, 49, maybe 48, 48. Yeah, 48. Uh, anyway, so I'm doing my show. And if you've ever seen me live, I do a bit about how I have a smart fridge, a fridge where there's a screen on it. And I start to talk about it. But what like my mind likes to do is if I sense something like the crowd was like, oh, this guy's an elitist. He has a smart. I want to address that. And so I start to go into that, which leads to other things, which leads to something else. And this is what's beautiful about stand-up comedy. You're following the comic's mind in real time. And he's allowed to go off script. Why? Because he or she writes the script. He or she or they writes the script. The person, and I don't even know if you can call people people anymore, write the script. Okay? And you get to see the meandering. And if you've ever been to one of my shows, it starts out talking about this, goes over there, goes here, comes back here, and then it goes back to where I originally started. And so I was going to get to the smart fridge. This guy didn't have any patience. This guy, old, much older, he was taking notes. That's how you know he's old. He wasn't like on his phone doing notes, uh, digital notes. He was handwriting notes on a piece of paper. Boy, you want to age yourself, put a pen in your hand. And, uh, and a guy's so old, he was like, I'm, I might be dying soon. I better, I better get to, he better get to this smart fridge joke before I die. You know, it looks like he's only halfway through his show. I could be dead in a half hour. And I'd like to die knowing what his smart fridge joke was. So here's the moment I'm on stage and I'm going to play the clip and talk along. I, I look out and I'm like, what's this guy doing? Is he, is he taking notes? Very fancy. And I, I, nothing but, uh, what are you taking notes now? What are you? <laughs> What is that, your to-do list for tomorrow? <laughs> Guy hands me the notes. Smart fridge, thank you. And it says thank smart fridge on it. On here? It's a whole page of notes. What happens when an escalator stops moving? He had jokes on there. Everyone just stops and stares. He's got These dad are his jokes. jokes, they're not mine. Yeah, to be very clear, those aren't my jokes. I do the fridge joke. So now I'm going to read Let me read some of the highlighted ones. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to stop it for a second. The, you hear the audience. The audience is going nuts. And why? Because this is a real moment. They know this isn't scripted. This is what's beautiful about a show. This is what you really don't get when you watch specials. When you sit at home and you think, oh, I can just watch a special on TV and it'll be as good. No. Go to a comedy club. I can tell you, you could see me 10 times in a row. You'll see the basic structure, the basic shell of, of an act, but you'll see the meandering. You'll see where the mind goes. You'll see beautiful moments like this. This is what makes comedy great. I encourage people to go see live comedy. Listen to the, the visceral reaction, the cheering, the moment we're all sharing because this old, this old codger, is that the word? This old guy was taking notes. My Irish grandfather once fell down the stairs with a pint of whiskey and did not spill one drop. That man knew how to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> Listen to this. These jokes are getting bigger reactions than mine. Oh, he's got his number on here if anybody wants to hire him. 941-65... Oh, the guy is loving it. You can see him bobbing his head in the front row. Could I interest you 
Oh my God, you like edited them? Uh, yeah, he took like jokes out of a book. Are these and then your jokes them. or? No, no, I didn't think so. You got them, you got them out of a book and you still had to correct it? Why do you have this? I was showing the smart fridge. Yeah. You didn't tell us about the smart fridge. I'm gonna get to the smart fridge. The guy's yelling, you didn't get to the smart fridge. I've been doing fridge. this for a long time. I'm going, I'm going all over the place. I'm working it, I'm working it. I'm gonna come back to the smart fridge. <laughs> it's all gonna come back. I know what I'm doing. It's so strange, I'm laughing at myself. I appreciate you taking notes from me because I do get lost. <laughs> my mind's not the way it used to be. Sometimes I forget if I brush my teeth, I have to go back into the bathroom, touch the toothbrush to see if it's still wet. Now I'm incorporating some of my But it still doesn't explain why do you have... Experience. Oh, so you're my warm-up act? <laughs> Guy turns around, he goes, I told these jokes. He's got like a, a New Yorker. I told these jokes to these people at dinner. So the guy, guy loves comedy so much, he's writing down I'm telling you, now he's going out to dinner, he's telling people my smart fridge joke. That's what's going on. So he turns around to the audience. You can see this clip if you ever get a chance to watch the video. And he says, I, I told these jokes at dinner to these people. And then I say, what are you, now you're my warm-up act? <laughs> Hold on, roll it back on him. Oh, so I, I do you have... I told these jokes to them at dinner. Oh, so you're my warm-up act? He said, I told these jokes to these people at dinner. That's why they're laughing harder than I've ever seen anybody laugh. <laughs> they're like, thank God, real jokes now. <laughs> I hate stair lifts. They drive me up the wall. Come on, that's actually a good dad joke. There you go. That's me at McCurdy's Comedy Club, February 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now a famous person touched that paper. <laughs> we fist bump. Guy's loving it. The audience is loving it. This is live comedy. I like the shoes I'm wearing, the green Converse. That's it. That's it. Go see live comedy. And maybe by then I'll have developed a bit that's actually decent that involves a tablespoon and a, and a teaspoon. Uh, episode 51. What's wrong with Orny What's Adams? What's name, Kev? Orny. Orny. Look at these new camera Adams, angles. Adams, there you go. Thank you, Ernesto Hurtado, for mastering the audio. You can find me at teamwhatswrong.com. Go to ornyadams.com. If you ever want to see one of my shows, ornyadams.com slash tour. This uh, video is up on Patreon. Older What's Wrong with Orny Adams episodes are up on YouTube. And uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. It's so desperate. And people go, how do I find you? How do you not find me? How do you not find me? Thank you, Vicki Jensen. Thank you, Kirk, uh, for uh, sending in those questions. And thank you to you, the listeners. This, uh, this has been a fun one. So I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. What's wrong with Winnie Adams? I gotta go uh, water my roses. Uh, now I'm laughing alone in a trailer. <laughs>